Happy Friday, tech lovers. Welcome to the Tech Stocks Daily Podcast, where we break down the buzziest tech stories circling the NASDAQ. Today, we've got a jam-packed show. We'll dig into CrowdStrike's roller coaster quarter and UiPath's topsy-turvy day on the stock chart. Then, buckle up for three explosive Google stories, ranging from the cannabis industry to regulators and futuristic AI photo helpers. Finally, we'll dive into MicroStrategy's big Bitcoin bets and why it's getting love from analysts. Subscribe and stay tuned. You won't want to miss this one. Hey, tech fans, buckle up. We've got a juicy roundup of updates circling CrowdStrike, the cybersecurity giant making waves today. Let's dive into why this company has everyone from Wall Street to Main Street talking. CrowdStrike has long been a darling of the cybersecurity world, thanks in part to its top-tier Falcon platform. However, the latest news isn't all sunshine. In its second quarter fiscal 2025 report, the company posted impressive revenue growth of 32% year-over-year, climbing to $963.9 million. Subscription revenues also jumped by 33%. Their annual recurring revenue surged to an impressive $3.86 billion, a 32% uptick over last year. Sounds awesome, right? But here's where it gets sticky. Those dazzling numbers are actually masking a concerning slowdown. Remember when CrowdStrike used to clock in over 50% growth annually? Well, those days are getting hazier in the rearview mirror. The growth rate has taken a dip, landing in the low 30s range this quarter. Investors are feeling jittery, and who can blame them? July 19th saw an IT disaster from a software update that caused a major outage, impacting millions of Microsoft Windows devices. The fallout cost CrowdStrike over $60 million in delayed deals, and most of them are still in the pending files. Thanks to these blips, CrowdStrike had to trim its fiscal 2025 revenue and earnings per share guidance. The new expectations? Total revenues between $3.89 billion and $3.90 billion, equating to a growth rate of 27 to 28 percent. Non-GAAP net income is now projected at $3.61 to $3.65 per share. This pared-down guidance has analysts re-evaluating their outlook, with many revising EPS estimates downward. That's not a good look. All these changes have taken a toll on CrowdStrike's stock price, which has tumbled 24.4 percent since the July outage. Compare that to its peers like Palo Alto Networks and Fortinet, which have seen gains of 32.2% and 6.9% respectively. And don't forget, CRWD shares are now trading below key technical indicators like the 50-day and 200-day moving averages, often a bearish sign. Now the CrowdStrike show isn't over. Investors are now eyeing Fal.com, the company's big annual customer and industry conference starting September 16th. This event is CrowdStrike's largest sales opportunity of the year and could help turn the tide. With more than 5,000 security execs and 95 sponsors attending, it could be a crucial moment to restore confidence. During the event, the company plans to implement and communicate key changes to prevent future issues and enhance customer trust. On a legal note, the law firm Faruqi & Faruqi has launched an investigation on behalf of CrowdStrike investors, looking into claims of false or misleading statements related to its software update procedures. They're encouraging investors who suffered $100,000 or more in losses to join the class action and seek compensation by the September 30th deadline. So, should you sell or should you hold? Analysts are split. With shares still premium priced despite the slump, lowered projections, and ongoing lawsuits, the call isn't straightforward. But those with a taste for high-risk, high-reward plays might find a potential upside if CrowdStrike can navigate these choppy waters. That's all the CrowdStrike buzz for now. Stick around for more tech updates as we scour the NASDAQ for news that you need to know. Hey tech aficionados, let's talk about what had UiPath ping-ponging all over the stock charts today. First up, UiPath seemed to hit a high note with better than expected Q2 earnings that initially sent their stock soaring by 10.4%. Kudos to the team for making it rain with a $360.3 million revenue, easily surpassing estimates set at $303.7 million. But hang on a second, because just as everyone was celebrating, reality decided to crash the party. The initial euphoria fizzled as quickly as it appeared. The downtrodden US jobs report signaled a weaker than expected economic environment, causing tech stocks in general, including UiPath, to dip. The macroeconomic outlook spooked investors, proving once again that not even stellar earnings can withstand a stormy economy. Suddenly, UiPath saw a reversal of fortunes, declining by 5.3% by mid-morning. Now, let's break down those earnings a bit. UiPath specializes in robotic process automation, essentially using software bots to handle repetitive office tasks. The company's Q2 revenue growth was at 10%, where it made a notable stride in beefing up its subscription services, which rose by 21.7%. But here's the kicker. Despite these positive gains, their gap losses ballooned to $103.3 million, up from $77.6 million. And although adjusted earnings per share just about squeezed by analyst estimates, 044 against a consensus of 33, it wasn't enough to escape some grim analyst sentiments. Analysts are a divided lot on this one. BMO Capital Markets pointed out in their note that UiPath met low expectations, citing challenges from the prior quarter. DA Davidson seemed a bit more upbeat highlighting the company's refocus on customer centricity and raised expectations for full-year adjusted operating income to $170 million. RBC Capital Markets highlighted that despite the somewhat ho-hum Q2 results, 
The software enterprise showed signs of stabilization, an encouraging sign after previous struggles. JP Morgan's take blended positive and cautious tones, underlining good execution, but also restructuring efforts that revealed weaknesses. Keep an eye on that $500 million expansion to their share repurchase program, as it's a move that's often a confidence booster, but didn't seem to pacify jittery investors today. Analysts' consensus remained neutral, with most setting 12-month price targets that suggest a slight upside may still be on the horizon, though skepticism persists given the stock's 44.87% downturn year-to-date. Lastly, UiPath's customer base is evolving. The shift from licenses to subscriptions is real. ARR rose 19% with a decent net retention rate of 115%. So to sum up, UiPath had a day of highs and lows, starting strong with surprisingly good earnings and an optimistic shift towards subscriptions, but quickly taking a dive due to wider economic worries. Stock investors are in a precarious position while analysts deliver mixed, yet cautiously optimistic verdicts. Stay wired to the market waves, and let's see how this script plays out for UiPath in a jittery tech stock climate. All right, folks, grab your coffee and buckle up, because we've got a Google-centric news blast coming your way. Today, Google is making headlines with not one, not two, but three juicy stories. Let's dive right in. First up, Google's stirring the pot in the cannabis industry. With the weed market growing faster than your houseplants die, retailers need to up their game, and Google is throwing them a lifeline. The tech giant is leveraging its suite of digital tools and AI capabilities to revolutionize cannabis retail. Picture this, cannabis businesses using advanced SEO strategies and tools like SEMrush and Google Analytics to boost their visibility online. Even though Google Ads says no thank you to cannabis promotions, the analytics data you get can still fine tune your marketing strategy like Gordon Ramsay seasons his dishes, perfectly and with a bit of flair. Google's AI, along with platforms like HubSpot and Zoho CRM, is on a mission to ensure that the right customers see the right products at the right times. You know those annoying but sometimes relevant ads we all see? That's AI at work. Retailers are also automating emails and social posts using MailChimp and Hootsuite, saving time and keeping the message consistent. Integrate Zoho CRM with your POS systems and boom, you've got a recipe for happy, loyal customers. Genius, right? Moving on, let's take a trip across the pond to the UK, where Google's got regulators frowning. Britain's Competition and Markets Authority has called Google out for allegedly using its dominant position in online display advertising to squash competition. Done, done, done. Google's been accused of giving its own ad tech services a leg up, disadvantaging every other player in the game. The CMA says this unfair play limits competitors and keeps the playing field about as level as a roller coaster. According to Juliet Onser at CMA, effective competition is crucial for the free content we all love. Without it, things get messy. Google's defense? They argue the CMA's got it wrong. Google insists their tools help fund content and allow businesses of all sizes to reach new customers. In the end, this regulatory braiding could stir echoes of the past when Microsoft faced similar antitrust scrutiny. Stay tuned, folks. This might get bumpy. Last but not least, we're getting futuristic with Google Photos. They're rolling out Ask Photos, an AI assistant that uses their Gemini models to make finding that photo from last year's chaotic office party a breeze. Over in Google Labs in the US, super lucky users are testing it out. With a simple question, this tool can sift through your photo chaos, pick out the highlights, or pinpoint that picture where you finally nailed a backflip. Users can even ask for photo suggestions from events or compile summaries of their last vacation, ensuring you never forget about that quaint cafe in Paris. This feature is coming to Android and iOS and is set to revolutionize how we search our digital treasure troves. You'll see the classic search get a conversational upgrade. And the best part, Google Photos doesn't use your pics for ads, so your secret selfies are safe. Phew. In summary, today's Google News is a roller coaster of innovation, regulatory drama, and futuristic convenience. Whether they're shaking up cannabis retail, ruffling regulators' feathers, or making your photo sifting tasks easier than ever, Google really is the gift that keeps on giving. Catch you all later for more tech updates. All right, tech enthusiasts, let's take a deep dive into today's hot topic, MicroStrategy. Yep, this company is lighting up the NASDAQ and for some pretty interesting reasons. Let's break it down. First off, did you know that if you had invested just $100 in MicroStrategy 15 years ago, you'd be looking at a cool $1,700 today? Now that's some serious growth. According to a Benzinga article, MicroStrategy has outperformed the market, averaging an annual return of 20.85%. Who needs a time machine when you've got data like that to make you swoon over missed investment opportunities? Next up, the buzz around Bitcoin. A new report from River predicts that US companies are expected to buy an enormous $10.3 billion worth of Bitcoin over the next 18 months. And guess who's one of the biggest corporate Bitcoin holders? You guessed it, MicroStrategy. With Michael Saylor at the helm, they've made massive strides by holding over 226,500 Bitcoins, worth around $14.7 billion. Saylor's not just throwing cash around, he calls Bitcoin an asset that promises economic immortality, offering a hedge against devaluation, unlike good old Warren Buffett, who still swears by traditional assets. Speaking of MicroStrategy and Bitcoin, the analysts are chiming in as well. Ramsey Ellisall from Barclays has initiated coverage on the company, 
marking it with an overweight rating and setting a price target at $146. Ramsey points out the Magic Combo MicroStrategy offers, a robust cash flow from their business intelligence products alongside an aggressive Bitcoin acquisition strategy. This positions MicroStrategy as the creme de la creme for investors looking to get Bitcoin exposure without diving fully into the crypto pool. MicroStrategy isn't just hodling Bitcoin, they're expanding their software game too. They are putting their money where their tech is, growing their subscription services, which promise higher margins and recurring revenue. Plus, stable partnerships with hyperscalers mean they're geared to leverage the advancing trends in business intelligence and artificial intelligence. So, whether it's outperforming Berkshire Hathaway or redefining corporate Bitcoin investment strategies, MicroStrategy is making waves and staying relevant. Sure, there's some concern about potential crypto winters, but the company seems well prepared to handle liquidity stress, insulating it from market upheavals. Now it's over to you guys. What are your thoughts on MicroStrategy's game plan? Do you think Bitcoin treasury strategies are the way forward for more corporations? Would you hop on the MicroStrategy train for exposure to both BI and Bitcoin? Drop your thoughts, arguments, and predictions in the comments below. Let's get this debate rolling. All right, tech aficionados, let's get straight to the analysis. Let's talk about CrowdStrike and whether we should buy, sell, or hold based on today's news and data. Get ready, because my verdict might surprise you. Now, if you've been tuned into our updates, you know that CrowdStrike's recent Q2 fiscal 2025 report had investors feeling like they were on a roller coaster. Sure, the cybersecurity titan posted a whopping 32% revenue growth and saw subscription revenues jump 33% year over year. That's hot stuff. Their annual recurring revenue surged to $3.86 billion. But here's where it gets murky. This is a significant drop from the over 50% annual growth we've seen in their heyday. Analysts are not thrilled, jittery even, pointing out this deceleration. What's even more troubling is the $60 million loss due to that nasty software update fiasco back in July, which caused a massive outage with millions of Microsoft Windows devices. Yep, you heard that right, millions. As a result, they had to trim their full year revenue and earnings expectations, bringing them down to a 27 to 28% growth rate and EPS guidance took a hit too. So let's cut to the chase. Should you sell, buy, or hold? Given today's news, my bold take is to hold for now. Why? Let me break it down. One, technical indicators. Currently, CRW shares are trading below key technical indicators like the 50-day and the 200-day moving averages. This generally signifies bearish territory, making it risky to dive in for a buy right now. Two, pending risk and uncertainty. There's a lawsuit brewing with the law firm Faruqi & Faruqi investigating possible misleading statements about its software update processes. This legal cloud could mean even more volatility. Number three, upcoming events. CrowdStrike's Fal.com event around the corner in September could be a game changer. If they manage to impress the bigwigs and restore investor confidence, we might see a turnaround. It's essentially their redemption arc, and sometimes those work out in smashing fashion. Final thoughts? I'd say hold your horses. Watch how the Fal.com event unfolds and keep an eye on how the lawsuit progresses. There might be a more favorable entry or exit point soon. Remember, even amidst turmoil, CrowdStrike remains a leader in cybersecurity. Temper your enthusiasm with caution, and let's see how these upcoming catalysts play out. As always, do your own research. This race isn't one you want to bet on without looking at all the curves in the track. Happy investing, everyone. All right, let's wrap this up. Today was a whirlwind on the NASDAQ with CrowdStrike struggling to regain investor confidence after a rough patch, UiPath managing a brief high before macroeconomic fears took hold, Google making waves in cannabis retail and battling UK regulators, and MicroStrategy staying strong with their bold Bitcoin bets. If you found today's news as riveting as I did, make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your fellow tech enthusiasts. Don't forget to tune in on Monday for another action-packed tech update. Have an amazing weekend, everyone.